What's up, everyone? It's 6.03, so that means it's time for the Clone Zone. I'm Alex. I'm Molly. And uh, someone, I'm, I'm trying to find the chat now. Uh, David, we're not late now. 6.03 is just the start time from now on. <laughs> <laughs> because we were late so many times. So now 6.03 is on time. Be proud of us. And I hit live. I hit live at 6.03. I promise. <laughs> We did it. There, did I hit it right after 604? So many people are calling us out on 604. Oh, no. Dang it. Well, on our end, we were right. Well, I apologize to everyone in chat, and I apologize to our guests. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in our good friends, Ken and Joseph from Four Center Podcast. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry we did this. It's right okay. At the start. It's 304 <laughs> here on the West Coast. So you, you're like three hours early. That's true. <laughs> and you're being polite. I was the reason it was late. I had to le leap out of my chair at like three o'clock. And also, you're from the Atlanta area. 6.05 is one of the great start times in pop culture history because of WCW and NWA wrestling, which started at 6.05. Great. That, there's yeah. some trivia. <laughs> <laughs> I never would have known otherwise. Alex has said, great. <laughs> great. Take it over to wrestling. <laughs> explain. Uh, kick it off, kid. Well, we're so glad to have both of you. You're two of our favorite people in the Star Wars space. And uh, I know how much you're loving the Bad Batch. So I'll, I'll just ask you, I think we talked last season, but now that we're in season three, has your opinion on the show changed at all? No, I think uh, I think love has only deepened, right, Ken? Absolutely. This is, uh, I, I hate to rank things, even though as I always joke, we have a show Star Wars ranked. I, this is my favorite of the Star Wars TV shows so far. Yeah. I feel like they, the, the first season really set the stage and then they got into this groove on, for me, on the second season of not only what the show is about, but how they tell their stories uh, with just such uh, patience and tension and a focus on mood and atmosphere and big heart. And all that stuff is just on display for season three. Everything that I like about it is even more there in season three. Yeah, we were talking today on our episode of Force Center that uh, is out now. Catch it after this live stream. Uh, I, I struggle sometimes to explain why I love it so much, but then there's these moments with Crosshair and this slow burn with his arc, and it's examining Star Wars redemption on on on, on a pace that uh, uh, I just really take to. And then the overt politics mixed with the overt action. It's got everything that I love in Star Wars. And I love all the other things. Great. I'll take a weird book of Boba Fett show. I'll do it all. But this show just... Just is uh, continuing to grow into my favorite. I, I, I like that I, you brought, brought up the politics because in our reaction from watching this episode, when Senator Chuchi shows up, I was so excited. I was like, the Chooch is here. <laughs> yeah. And then she was barely in it, but I got really excited. All the same. I have such Chuchi fears. I'm, I'm still wounded from, <laughs> from losing our beloved uh, tech. Uh, hard night, hard night that tech night was uh, mixed with the, a Mandalorian episode. And yeah. <laughs> I still I, remember that night. I'm like, oh, I, I watched Mandalorian is good. Now I'm excited to watch Bad Batch and get to bed at a reasonable time. Oh, God. I uh, was yeah. just thinking about that tech episode and our reaction to it was non-existent because we we watched him fall and we were like, no, that didn't yeah. happen. Total <laughs> denial. That, the first stage that even of happened. tech falling is denial. <laughs> Mm -hmm. He's fine. He'll be back. And I mean, that that's still uh, a theory that's being thrown around a lot. I'm sure we'll talk about that in a little bit. But I, I want to keep talking about the politics and how this episode opened, because I also really like that we did a little catch up with uh, Senator Singh and Chuchi. Yeah. And the, the story is mostly centered around the clones and what happened to them. But it's like trying to remind us here's what every what everyone else is doing during the reign of the empire and how the clones are helping like this tiny little fledgling rebellion yeah uh, that was great yeah we talked a little bit on on our episode uh who am i kidding we talked a lot on our episode as we always yeah. do uh about that scene that it was absolutely great to just check in on the the state of the galaxies as bad batch has been doing of showing what it's like when the empire first you know tightens its grip on the galaxy uh, but I also just really liked it because I thought it had such rhythm with everything that was going on with the clones who ended up fighting with one another and some of them being clear on why we're fighting 
and others just sort of following a dogma of I'm on this team. And so I'm mad at you and you should be on my team. And all of it just made me think about how Palpatine is, is the reason that all these people are fighting and always has been. And that great scene of, you know, a Republic Senator and a separatist Senator, like, well, we have five minutes to talk <laughs> unobstructed and can determine that we actually want the same thing. And there is no reason for us to be fighting was it's a great, political statement and, and in the context of Star Wars, it's the statement of, you know, if you're fighting with someone, there's probably somebody else who wants you to be fighting with them. And it's probably Palpatine. Yeah, we were talking to this measure of uh, uh, of your worth, your value and your identity, which has been all through this series. But that episode that that, that this episode is is table set by these two former, uh, you know, uh, opponents on the political uh, arena. Uh, really having to analyze their own why, and and I keep looking at this angle of you know, hey, you're you're a separatist, I'm Republican, and, and, and a republic, and uh, or, or Republican, however you want to look at it, it's real world politics. But just uh, actually analyzing, what are you here for, and and what do you want, what do you want to accomplish, and where not just common ground, but uh, and compromising, you know, this and that. If Singh had said something that Shu Chu wouldn't bend on, I'm sure they would have had a different conversation. But finding their common ground, I, I, this episode is very much about opposites attracting. Uh, and having so many shots of one person here, one person here, uh, and 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 I'm on this side, you're on this side. Like Joseph said, the, the team mentality and pushing past it. It's been great. That I love that. I didn't even make that connection between the two of them, and then later on we have Hauser and Crosshair mm -hmm. doing much the same, which I, and, I love their relationship too. Yeah, and and Rex and Wolf also being this great example of it of. You know, Wolf just yeah. saying, like, I'm a soldier of the Empire. That's I'm on I'm on this team. And uh and Rex was saying, like, yeah, but you don't actually agree with any of the beliefs of that team. You agree with me. So why don't you follow what you actually uh, believe and agree upon rather than what team you think you're on? Yeah. And, yeah. And one of the things that I've, when I say this show is just overt in its politics, it, it is so real world and it's not necessarily about uh, real real world policies and real world uh, voting voting choices we have but it is that question and we go back to uh, season two episode three where you have you know Cody and crosshair and a former separatist and 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 they're like we're not here for politics and she comes back with that very strong of course you're not because if you did you might rearrange your view you might change your perspective that's why it's so easy for you to push it aside and, and this show kind of wrestling with that even up to these moments that's what I love about it hmm. Uh, let's just jump straight to the end, I guess, because uh, we, we brought up Wolf and I love a that he got like the big bombshell cliffhanger ending of the first episode just yeah, yeah. for for Clone mm -hmm. Wars fans to be like, oh, God, it's Wolf. Uh, but that that whole moment at the end, I was so rooting for him to be like, yeah, you're right. And just all of them go <laughs> get on that ship. <laughs> but how do you feel about his choice to still stay with the Empire, but let them go? Uh, I don't, I feel like it's not going to last long. I feel like he's just like on a practical plot level. I don't think whoever exactly he reports to is going to be like, Oh, cool. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you have a moral objection to hunting a child. Cool. No problem. Uh, here's a raise. I, I mean, I think like <laughs> crosshair, he is going to find out that he cannot have any agency or personal morality in his situation. Um, the, th that whole thing just made me think, made me really have fun wondering, how much we're going to tie to where uh, Rex and Wolf and Gregor end up in Rebels. Like, I don't need to see them like, well, time to move to Celos. And like, yeah. I don't need to see them like, you know, <laughs> you know what I want to uh, do? Go worm fishing. Let's go worm fishing. <laughs> you know, let's go walker shopping to see where we'd like to live together. Like, I don't need the yep. sitcom set up. But that emotional idea of, you know, it feels so much like everything's building towards Rex and the clones fighting the fight they need to to free their brothers from Tantus. And I'm curious mm -hmm. to have that emotional moment of like, and now we can all rest and now we can all have our, our time, which mm -hmm. I think for them becomes, you know, being retired on fishing planet. Yeah. <laughs> it makes me sad though, to think that maybe part of the reason they're there is that like, they've seen too much. They've been through too much that the three of them just decide, you know what, we're just going to go live our, <laughs> the rest mm -hmm. of our days out, out here away from everything else because we don't know how to live a, a normal life with yeah. with everybody else and that's that can happen and that's really sad yeah and just that that well you know there's no place really for us in the empire 
and we think it's too big. We're, we're not going to take it down, but we want to mm. choose what we do with our lives and just, we're going to kick back and <laughs> have some <Yeah>. beer, <laughs> yeah. be retired buds together. Like, why not? Don't pull us <laughs> back in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of uh, beer, I saw several Cerveza <laughs> crystal jokes in here already, but I've lost all of them. I meant well, to start them. That, the uh, the commander or the the commando CX operative is going to pull his face mask up, and it'll just be a Cerveza crystal. <laughs> Cerveza crystal. <laughs> what if uh, Crosshair had pulled one from under the water and smashed it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there we go. There we go. It was MC Lego Boy. I think we all yeah. know who the clone operative is. It's not Cody or Tech. It's Cerveza crystal. Cerveza. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't think to make a new one for this time around, but <laughs> there's no time. Yeah, there's no time. <laughs> also, real quick before we move on, uh, Mumbo Jimbo says, I miss you all competing on the Star Wars Schmodown. Thank you for the super chat. I don't know that we miss it, but it was a good time. <laughs> I miss the early days. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, it got it got uh, very intense toward the end. Yeah. I, and, I've uh, had a... Aunt, Aunt Porkins no. just says, hi, Ken. <laughs> hey, Ann Porkins. Uh, I have, uh, I, I love, I was uh, watching one of your Q&As and you both forgot a name, especially you, Molly. There was like a name you couldn't remember and you had to edit it back in. I just felt so seen because <laughs> the other day I was driving around, Alex, and I was like, wait a minute, what's the name of the rebel spy Cassian kills? Oh my God. I said, I'd never <laughs> no. forget it. That cost me a match against Damon. What am I doing? And finally remembered Tivik about three days later. So it felt good to leave all that behind. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we've been re-watching the movies like one at a time at one every two weeks uh, to do our FAQ videos. Just watched The Phantom Menace yesterday and I was like, it's so great to not pause this every two <laughs> seconds and just to sit yeah. and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. I but think that's what George that. Lucas intended is for us to memorize the color of the flags of the podcasters, uh, Mark, <laughs> right? That's what he wanted yeah. us to be thinking about in that moment. Yeah, <laughs> There was that moment, though, when they were on the trade federation ship and i was like what are those little droids in the background and you were like we've looked this up before and they're really hard to find and i, I remember we spent a ton of time trying to find like those specific droids what are they this is very important important and then you important. asked it again yesterday you were like what are those droids and i just went i don't know i don't know oh well yeah. who cares? and Let's that was the going. end of the conversation we didn't stop so the movie free. to go look it up we were just like that's oh so, well that's so, <laughs> so great free. though because i i remember absolutely struggling to the point of just getting mad and putting in pointless Google searches of like squat little bleepers in Phantom Menace. <laughs> That's them. Yep. <laughs> yeah, come on. That's the guy. <laughs> yep. It, that the the brain fart happens all the time now. Where we'll be on stream and I'm like trying to remember something I should know, and I'm like, eh, oh well. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> We've stretched our brains too thin for trivia at this point. Mm -hmm. That's okay. <laughs> Well, uh, let's bring it back to the Bad Batch. And uh, since people brought it up and suggested a Cerveza crystal might be under that helmet, do you think, do you have any theories on the CX operative? Or in your mind, is it just another reg clone? Um, yeah, my thought is, um, I, I think that it, it's still possible that it is a clone of Crosshair. I feel like it would have made sense to reveal that uh in some of these moments i kind of kept expecting the helmet to pop off um one of the things that i loved the most about this episode was it, it felt like not only is crosshair making this emotional sacrifice to risk his life for omega but that particular cx operative so represented what crosshair had been you know that it felt like he was kind of taking on his own shadow self in almost mm -hmm. a psychological way so i kind of expected him to reach up from the water as he was drowning and pull off the uh the helmet and, and look into his shadow self, but wasn't that. Um, my wild guess for fun is that it's cross tech that they've used <laughs> uh, the genetic samples from both of them to kind of try to make their own little, you know, super, super batch commando. Uh, that's my kind of wild theory. My other thing about it is just being a little concerned about, I, I trust them, but I feel like maybe there this might be one of those instances where they're building up a little bit more of a mystery than they mean to. And we're all right. naturally wondering about it and having fun talking about it. But I hope they're not setting up like, yeah, it was just a reg. He's just kind of a symbol of what the clones had been before. And if if they're accidentally setting up more of a mystery than they mean to. Well, that's mm -hmm. what I I, I kind of don't think that they're doing a whole lot to set up a mystery. Like 
they've shown us two operative faces and it's just been a reg. So mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm like, it's probably just another reg. It, it could be tech or crosshair or something, but until shown otherwise, right now I'm like, it's it's probably just another dude. Yeah, yeah. it's it's hard because the the special operative in this one, like he had so many chances to die and he survived <laughs> all of them. And he comes up out of that water in the end. So you're like, man, they must be keeping this one alive for a specific that... reason, but maybe they're just really, really tough. I mean, he's good at everything else. So I do I think know. it's important that he lived. Like he went over the mm -hmm. waterfall and he could have just died. And then they could have shown us another operative down the line. It wouldn't have mattered. But this one specifically like was having trouble with his comms and then mm -hmm. pulled himself out of the water. And we, they want us to know that this one specifically is still alive. Mm -hmm. So I guess there's a reason for that. A lot I, of people have thought of this idea. Um, Saf, the staff asks, do you think the operative in today's episode is Cody? They clearly want us to know there's something special about him as seen by his slightly different design, his visor antenna and his survival. Hmm. And I also feel like they, you know, we spent a lot of screen time with him, including some things that subtly psychologically humanized him. He, he wasn't just a villain. We were watching mm -hmm. him, you know, with his injured soldier mm -hmm. and limp along. And it wasn't just like he's scary, unstoppable. He's a like, you know, a T-1000. It felt like we we're watching a person put themselves through hell, as, as Ken put it uh, on mm -hmm. our discussion. So it, it, that makes me also feel like there's a story with this person. And I trust them to have a meaningful story. It's just whether it's going to be anybody we know or it's just a guy who went through hell and he's a new character shaped right. by the events we're seeing. Yeah, with, without a doubt, we as a fandom have a lot of fun, as I say, wrapping up our own mystery box that's not there <laughs> under a tree for us. We just go, oh, gifts, and and we have a lot of fun. The, the what is it, the Merrick from, from Ahsoka was, almost became self, you know, almost became parody, quite frankly, of the fandom, <laughs> when it's like, it's a, a force, a smoke ghost monster, like, that's all it is. Uh, and and it's all about the themes. We all at Force Center. We ask why. What what is your what is your theory? Great, but what's the why behind it? And uh, the thematic use of this particular I keep calling him Shadow Clone Number Three, is is truly like Joseph said. It's 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 Crosshair wrestling with his own shadows. I I framed it as Crosshair fighting his own choices, both both past and potentially pre uh, future and present. Uh, so that could be achieved with just a reg. Uh, it could be achieved with crosshair across tech. I think the, th the themes are what's important, and it's definitely intriguing. But, I, you know, I'm going to have fun speculating. But I, I do think I'm putting a lot of uh, Republic credits down on it just being a, a reg. Hmm. Yeah. I, I like the idea of it being a mirror of crosshair because uh, I took screenshots of s some of the lines when they're fighting, and he just says, you had your chance to be one of us. You chose the wrong side. Yeah. Crosshair is hearing that from both sides of the coin. And it's probably just like been ringing in his head this whole time, those exact lines. And so, yeah, he's just wrestling with those thoughts constantly with himself. And mm -hmm. I think I, I didn't really think about a clone, like a direct clone of Crosshair, but that would be interesting, mm. especially the way that the other operative looks at Crosshair and he kind of smiles and he's like, oh, it's you. <laughs> Yeah, not like any of them can't use a sniper rifle, but he's sniping away. And there's also some like direct, I, I felt like even if it's not a Crosshair clone, there's like other, uh, Crosshair talks about how he didn't make it in that program because he's defective and he does his own thing. And then that uh, clone operative spends the entire time going rogue and like almost a point of <laughs> Wolf being like comical about like, mm. what, what's this guy doing now? Like, two lone wolves go in their own way kind of thing. But um, yeah, so for this episode, I kind of didn't ultimately didn't care who he was this episode because he worked so well with Crosshair. But uh, Co the Cody thing, I get why people do it. I think in my heart, I just kind of feel like I loved where we left Cody, where he was like, this is bull bleep and <laughs> yeah. walked away. So I guess it would be a tragic story of, you know, how did they break Cody? Because Cody made such a good, yeah. solid choice by himself. I, I still don't think that they captured Cody or arrested him just the way that Rampart so dismissively and angrily is like oh yeah he just went a wall like he's mm -hmm. just mad about it I I don't see him lying about that I feel like he'd be like yeah your friend Cody uh said some stuff and we took him 
I don't know why he mm-hmm. would be all yeah. cagey about that. Yeah. yeah no, no, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, it's hard to get into the mind of Imperials, and sometimes they don't want to. But but with Rampart or even Hemlock, it's it's they they want to they want to use some information against you. That's why you know at the end of the last season with, with Hemlock kind of being like, "Look, Gandalf, we got Frodo's chainmail here. Mm-hmm. Your buddy's hurt. You did it." Like that, I think they would want to use that uh, to their advantage. And Rampart, you know, uh, arrogant and full of hubris as he is, I, I think he'd still want to use that to be like, "We caught him," or he's you know he's he's deep in a you know he, he's deep into us now. He, he's on our side for sure. Like, I, I, but I, I I like the idea. I get it, Cody. It would be heartbreaking to be tragic, like you said, Joseph. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, there's a lot of great discussion, and uh, uh, I love some of the uh, <laughs> the old school clones <laughs> being mm-hmm. guests. Because it, I mean, I, if Cody had not yet shown up in the show, I would be like, yeah, it's Cody. Sure. Because mm-hmm. it, for me, it's it almost feels like a murder mystery where like we're running low on suspects. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, Alex, yeah. you said something about the knife that he had, and I saw a couple other people on Twitter say the same thing. But then as we were rewatching the episode today, we see him take that knife off of another clone. That's so that <laughs> that's that so your... I saw that today. I was like, ooh, that actually does kind of make sense. He does have Cody's knife. And then we literally see him <laughs> take it from someone else. And <laughs> I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I wanted to bring up uh, this from Guiguio just because we're discussing it. Thank you. Uh, just seeing if there's a, some reveal coming that this could be a brainwashed clone also throwing out Cody. And, and I also wanted to point out what uh, Saf stead, said, because I didn't notice that the extra visor thing mm. was uh, additional. I just kind of assumed it was on oh. all the operatives, but that's a good point too. So yeah, I, I am kind of <laughs> starting to lean a little bit away from my my just normal reg idea. Uh, or theory, but maybe. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. Again, it, it, this episode's all about opposites and choices. You know, that's, uh, uh, you know, Joseph, I'll let you go a little more detail in it, but, but Hauser versus Crosshair and Hauser uh, versus Crosshair and how they take care of the, the children in their lives that they've been charged with protecting in ways is, is, is part of the opposites. Sing it, sing and choochie. Uh, the chooch and sing, as they say, uh, <laughs> and, and just those clones, Wolf and Rex. It's, it's this episode was about uh, weighing those choices and seeing what those could do. So uh, that's why I still think it could be a reg, even though I, yeah, there's some fun sus- suspects indeed. Yeah. That's, that's a great point that I, I get so distracted and lost in Hauser's eyes that I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I had to bring this up because it was making me laugh for a super chat from Jamie Johnson asks, did the special guest whiskey <laughs> come with four center? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Whiskey has a lot of thoughts that are going to come out in the second half. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm warming up for my appearance Saturday night on your show, Molly. I've got some Bacardi Dragonberry with Sprite as my new oh, favorite yeah. drink. I need to go get some of that. I did not realize that that is in one of the drinks at Oga's Cantina. Mm. Oh, really? The the Dragonberry mm. rum. It's in. Oh. I forget which one it is. But... I gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I don't but, have any whiskey, but <laughs> wine is is getting it done for tonight. I've got a Christmas beer that I'm trying to work my way through. Mm-hmm. God, like what's the oldest thing we have? I'll drink that. <laughs> okay, we still have I'll, a bunch know. of like pumpkin ciders in there too from yeah, fall. Yeah, I'm not drinking that. Halloween candy, nice. Mm-hmm. That doesn't uh, last maybe, long around here. Maybe the uh, the power of that that operative is maybe Crosshair will just maybe that's somebody for Crosshair mm-hmm. to finally obsess on saving. Like he he had. He's come so far yeah. from wanting to just be left in the prison to be punished for his sins to being, you know, competing for number one Omega Dad, <laughs> you know, and made this big leap of connecting to Hauser and, and feeling a part of the brotherhood of all of the clones. Like maybe that's a, a point of the Clone X for, for finally a clone for Crosshair to be like, we leave no one behind, mm-hmm. including the a hole who drowned me. We leave no <laughs> one behind, including that guy. I, I think that's a great idea. I to to go back to Hauser, I didn't even make the connection that yeah, he cared for Hera mm-hmm. in season Betrayed one. Her. So Betrayed. yeah, that that's uh, wait, did Hauser betray her? Well, I mean, he, uh, yeah, he he he, he, he was trying to protect her and felt like oh he, yeah yeah you no know, like he had uh, I was refreshing myself on the Wikipedia that he was trying to make sure she was safe and like you know. I think there's an implication yeah. that he, you know, let the Sindula family down, including Hera. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Right. Mm. Uh, 
but but seeing him seeing crosshair interacting with omega i didn't even make that connection that yeah he probably sees himself in that a little bit so i i loved his journey with crosshair this episode yeah, I, I call this episode a, a trust fall in action where there's a lot of you know, obviously tr the word trust and loyalty gets thrown around. But really, I, I do think this episode is a reflection on, on discovering your value. But how I love that moment with Crosshair that he's just like, I, look, you, you can believe me or not. But what I'm saying, what I'm saying is true because I, I, I know what I'm I know who I am now. I know where I'm at and I know what I've done. And it's all going to be in my actions and just all these wonderful endearing things with crosshair and omega i keep saying on force center that it's become my the hound and, and aria uh storyline <laughs> that i love so much in game of thrones which is not just a fun sitcom spin-off it, it is two people changing and one one giving them the younger one a lesson of the truth of this world and the other one kind of uh, helping them kind of change grow and find value in other people uh and so to, for hauser to see that and kind of be like you know, again, like Joseph said, is it is it's an emotional betrayal of the family and Hera. Just like I'm seeing this in action, I'm seeing Crosshair in action. That's how he gains my trust, and I trust him. And that was a powerful theme throughout for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. it makes me wonder just how long of a time period it's been since they escaped Tantus. Because you think back to Crosshair being in that cell and saying like, "I belong in here. Like you get out of here to to Omega. Like I don't." need saving to what he says in this episode he is a completely different person yeah yeah i mean that scene with her in the in the jungle is 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 so funny and so touching at the same time the, the out of all of the endless great delivery of d bradley baker my favorite might now be oh, yeah. gotcha crossbow <laughs> like <laughs> that's the best way that's that's like that's like him saying i love you with a thousand heart emojis like uh, for crosshair uh, it, 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 but it's that that Hauser hears of mm -hmm. that's who that's who that guy is. He's somebody yeah. who's afraid he's going to let a child down the way I let Hera down. That's mm -hmm. why I trust him. Yeah, I have been comparing Crosshair this season to Zuko and Avatar when he decides he's going to be good, and it's not just like a and everything's great now. He kind of has to go on a, a an adventure with every member of the cast, and I see this as just his adventure with like all clones just the regs in general and mm -hmm. getting to earn the trust of hauser as i mean he's like the only survivor outside of rex which is a real bummer but uh, mm -hmm. i i just see him as a stand-in for all clone kind that he can be on good terms with them yeah yeah, I've loved, and I, I, I don't, uh, I, I, I'm not an Avatar or Avatar fan, less bit, less bit, Airbender fan, but yeah, I, I, I trust you on that, Alex, and, and it is kind of this redemption tour. But what I love about it is redemption so strong in Star Wars; it's always going to be present in Star Wars stories because that's uh, kind of what we're here for in terms of you know morality tales for the youth of the world. But uh, to actually get to the chance to explore it over three seasons, Crosshair's arc is is becoming one of my favorites in Star Wars. I keep joking; I didn't necessarily see myself in him because I wasn't going around sniping people and cold blood <laughs> but this slow change that comes from this point of like wait a minute wait a minute uh I, i'm a good soldier that's what that's what we are that's our identity i've done that you all else, else around me have changed and left me behind and that can fester that can be a a wound that really hurts and you might not understand it he's gone through this this time and that uh, you know over the course of three years now three seasons to find his value, which is again, what very much about this episode is for me. It's not just, I was loyal. They weren't loyal to me. It's like that, that means you understand what you're worth finally and, and, and make a decision based on that and, and how you want to affect the world from that point of view. And so it's been fun to see them have the time to do a star Wars redemption story over three seasons with crosshair. Mm -hmm. Do we think that, uh, because Hauser accuses crosshair of hiding a little bit more, do you think there's still more that he hasn't told everyone, the Bad Batch uh, included? I don't think so. Maybe. I, I I don't know what advantage he gains right now by going, oh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Tannis is, you, you take the 134-210 interchange and it's off, get off at, uh, you know, uh, Oak Park. I, I, I don't think he would, would, would hold that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't think he's he... hiding the location, yeah. but more maybe something about what happened to him. Yeah, maybe part of the process of potentially sure. becoming an operative. Yeah, yeah I can see him hiding something that he doesn't think is important and he's ashamed of. Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. that either mm -hmm. either something he did or uh, specifics of the torture he went through. 
You know, I think yeah. so much of his journey is this kind of great classic Star Wars story of you're stronger together, you're stronger with connections, but it makes you so incredibly vulnerable to trust and to open yourself. And he's getting so much out of loving Omega now, but now he's got to be afraid for her in a way he wasn't before. Yeah. Yeah. And so I can see him still kind of wrestling with that vulnerability. So like, is there something I said or <laughs> did or was done to me that I don't realize is important and I don't feel like talking about? Yeah, mm -hmm. De definitely hiding a lot of trauma and the handshake mm -hmm. too. His, his like yeah. his physical pride. I guess he's not totally hiding that because he's doing target practice. Like he's yeah. working with AZ to try to get better at that. But <laughs> he definitely hasn't made it super known that he's dealing with that issue. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's again, it's his identity. It's, it's what he thought his, uh, his value was. And, you know, sure, I think he should be trying to get it back. But uh, even today, uh, you know, seeing, uh, you know, Joseph, you loved, uh, like I did, the the grenade gun part portion, which was him kind of going, all right, this is who I am now, <laughs> loud and breaking <laughs> through the door. I got to launch a grenade because I can't hit anything. Uh, so I think he's 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 going to learn that, you know, being, being the sniper of the group, of this space a team isn't all he is yeah yeah but he's been on a i mean <laughs> uh i feel guilty feeling like he might be holding back something important knowingly because the last couple of episodes has been crosshair <laughs> opens up uh he, you know he's yeah. he's been spilling his guts uh left and right oh, yeah. for for crosshair yeah. for him yeah that's true yeah, for him. yeah. Absolutely. I I have really wanted to see him come out of the other side along with Wrecker and Hunter and like when they got to Pabu and they were able to able to use their skills for something that wasn't war. Mm. I, I really want to see Crosshair find a way to use what he sees as his value for something like that, that mm. I, I don't know what like that's a tough one <laughs> because I don't know how you turn shooting a, a blaster to kill into something constructive. Uh, but if they can find a way, I, I'd love that. Not, I, I, I was starting, this is a joke, but now I'm dead serious. Pabu's not going to last, we're all afraid, because of the, you know, excellent, your excellent analysis of the of the trailer. It's Molly's uh, fault. I I totally missed it. We would all be living in ignorant bliss. No, <laughs> if, uh, if Molly other people saw it. Molly walks no, no. up and holds the screen up to me and she's like, is that Pabu? Yeah, Pabu. <laughs> no. Yeah. I think that he'd be a great interior designer on Pabu. Uh, I mean, I think... Oh, yeah. Okay. I think his, I mean, his skill is sort of hand-eye coordination, but it's about seeing patterns and distance and perspective. Mm -hmm. Somebody's making a paintball art joke, which is uh, hilarious. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I think it is that idea of like the skills that go behind this are applicable in other ways. Um, you know, my dad is a visual artist and he once told me like that you can draw better if you look at things better. That's That's how you get good at drawing is taking your time to look at things and see what they really look like. Uh, mm -hmm. And I feel like that, I feel like my dad could give Crosshair a nice talk <laughs> about his skill set. <laughs> Crosshair's I think Cross gonna obviously become like a, a woodworker, but he's gonna do yeah. all of his work with his teeth, mm -hmm. like little tiny toothpick woodworking. <laughs> it's gonna be a model by I yeah. Um, <laughs> if he was like instead of you know building like a miniature ship, he did like a miniature sculpture. He's like yeah. I'm carving into this toothpick. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you look, it's a beautiful statue. Mm. I do like uh, that idea yeah. that he becomes an artist. <laughs> yeah, because he uh, will clearly. Everyone's going to have a happy ending at the end of this. That's just a given. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that kind of show. That's always been the vibe. Yeah. Have to go lucky, except for tech. Crosshair got to go. Crosshair got to mm -hmm. go. Aww. You think so? Yeah, I, I, the idea, I think this is our buddy PLD and Maddie Gunner over at their show. I think it, it came out there of the idea of Crosshair and Omega being the only two that survive. And that's beautifully dark. Uh, no, no shocker that uh, Maddie Gunner is a, is a death metal expert there. Um, <laughs> I, there's something about, uh, I don't know, it just seems too poetic for me and sad and tragic. It is again, it's the hound telling Arya, do not, do not be like me. You have been chasing vengeance for so long and you have to let that go change. It is it, last Mohicans, the British captain finally going, you know what? I get it. I get it. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, it's, a, it's the British captain at last Mohicans uh, telling Cora Monroe, go, go live a life with him. I understand now. And I'm going to be the one to burn to death. It is, it is, it's got all those earmarks for me, even though it's a happy, scrappy puppy dog batcher of a show. 
I I'm feeling more a hope for Crosshair as we go along. I thought his arc was going to be shorter in this season, and I thought he was going to you know feel guilty yeah. for what he'd done, escape with Omega, and say I I I was wrong, but I don't know how to be anything but a soldier, so I'll die fighting for her. And I felt like yeah. he'd maybe be on that track of like I don't I don't want to reinvent myself, but he's been growing so much, and then this episode. Less than halfway through the season, just about halfway through the season, it feels like we almost got that crosshair. I'll sacrifice myself for Omega for everyone, mm -hmm. and it didn't work out for him. Mm -hmm. So unless it's like a a, a fake out, uh, I have a little bit more hope for for crosshair. That he says, does kind of keep yeah. trying like, that. He's like, I'll, I'll <laughs> handle the operative when he knows he probably can't. He mm -hmm. did it in the stairwell. He did it outside, and I did love the. I don't like this plan. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a rogue. Uh, I'm a man, rebel, Omega. <laughs> you know, the greatest movie of all time is Young Guns 2. It's Doc Skurlock looking at Billy the Kid going, I shall finish the game as, as he buys time for them to leave. Uh, but anyways, that's just me. It's an insight. Four Center's often therapy center. It's an insight to my brain, maybe. <laughs> uh, people are talking about being afraid for Echo because he had that nice moment with, uh, mm -hmm. with Omega. I don't know. I feel like Echo the last couple episodes mm -hmm. has been everybody like Hunter and Crosshair are competing dads. And I feel like uh, Echo is evolving into fun uncle who's like, yeah, I don't have to parent you so I can just swan in every once in a while and say, I see you're not a kid anymore. A have a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> or, you, you know, I know your dads are a little uptight. Do you want to have a private chit chat with an adult who gets it? Like that feels like Echo's vibe to me lately. So I'm kind of I, I love that. Live. I love that vibe. The, the I yeah, cool uncle, cool aunt vibe of just mm -hmm. like, hey kid, here here's a something sharp. Go have fun. <laughs> I I love the crossbow. It looks so cool. And then the second they put a bunch of smoke bombs out, and she was a walking glow stick. I was like, oh, turn it off. Yeah. <laughs> stop, 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 stop. Yeah. <laughs> She, I, I love her getting it uh, and 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 uh, kind of uh, you know loading it up there like she's got the the nerf version of it that we all want like that's that's mm -hmm. what we'll be doing. What if the last shot of the entire show is just a, a few figures you know staring off into the twilight after after burying their loved ones, and it's just AZ three Batcher and Gonky, <laughs> they're the ones who live. That's we it. did talk about them having their own like uh, sidebar episode like just the three think, of them having their own thing i think four center talked about that the bad batch oh. team. yeah yeah <laughs> we, i called love it like the d squad or something of oh yeah yeah i yeah. don't remember what we say i don't remember what we say <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious <laughs> that's uh, uh I, I was telling ken and joseph molly beforehand that we had both independently started their podcast and then I was like, I gotta shut it off because we're about to have all the same conversations. <laughs> I know, I know. No. No. We talked about a lot about art. Uh, do you want to do drawings? Mm. Ooh, yeah. Well, I know that Molly and I drew yeah, the same I... thing. Yeah, I tried we can to, go ahead and show I tried to convince want. her to draw something else, uh, but I'm gonna show mine first so Molly's can, uh, <laughs> it's gonna. <laughs> Yours will look better after mine, yes. and mine would just only look worse after yours. So, uh, we've already talked about this, but uh, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Omega, Omega starting to copy Crosshair. I, I love any time <laughs> she you gotta give her the anyone. ponytail. <laughs> That's the front of her head. You can't see the ponytail from there's, there. There's, a, there's either a glare or a smudge. It looks like she's uh -huh. got like a Gandalf pipe going. Yeah, oh, she's yeah. vaping, right? Did Echo bring her a vape pen? <laughs> it does. <laughs> this, this is not my best work. I've been doing really good batchers so far this season, but I also tried to draw oh. her <laughs> sitting there like with her That's leg right. pulled up trying to be all cool and crosshairs like, uh-huh. <laughs> Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's hilarious. It's beautiful. I um, love that moment eyes. So much. I I don't have uh, I don't have I'm not an artist of any kind, and so I did not inherit my dad's art skills. Uh, but I did uh, the shadow of uh, crosshair fighting crosshair. Uh, that's mm. my interpretation of a toothpick. Uh, this is an, uh, some sort of uh, I'm going to hang this in a museum. It'd be worth a lot that's, of money. It's yeah. beautiful. It's he beautiful. Kind of looks like Voldemort. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, a little, 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 little bit, little bit. I, I, I cheated and did two because I had two moments. Well, I, I, we, we learned after the Obi Wan Kenobi episode that we did to Joseph has to go last. 
<laughs> uh, yes, your your art is uh, lovely, and better than mine. Oh my god! <laughs> you see the <laughs> Oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> I just love is uh, I believe Fireball is the same one who brings them the spicy food and then uh -huh. like trouble. <laughs> let me get yeah. a flamethrower. Yep. And I just love like sometimes we meet like a random clone like Nemec. Where'd you get that name? You know, yeah. too too bad for you know. Don't be Nemec in Star Wars. But like it, Fireball, we barely know him. And then we should have got... had Fireball shots in in memory of oh, dang. Fireball. Oh yeah. yeah. The reason <laughs> is Fireball. Spice <laughs> modification. I I love that he said it was Gregor's recipe too. Just because yeah. Gregor worked as a fry cook for yep, right. however long. <laughs> you gotta yep. imagine that Gregor made something really weird and bonkers, and then Fireball came in and was like, I can make it weirder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Spice hot sauce. Spicy modifications. <laughs> uh, and then the other one was because I wanted to be sure to uh, get uh, your uh, Alex and Molly's opinion on this because Ken and I were talking about it, uh, about this moment. Is Rex uh, shock? Uh -huh. M count. Yeah. <laughs> M count. That's so good. <laughs> yeah, you'd uh, think that Rex would know a little bit more about that, have a little bit more to say, more intuition about it. He's just like, yeah, I think I heard of that. You know what this reminds me of is uh, Luke hearing the name Obi-Wan Kenobi. I don't know any Obi Wan Kenobi, Ben Kenobi, maybe. <laughs> like uh, that's a good one. M count. Hmm. Heard of it? Metachlorian count, but it might be related. I don't know. Yeah, we we he doesn't want long... to jump the gun. I get it. <laughs> yeah, we yeah we had a long discussion today on our episode that uh, really took a look at all all angles of this. Joseph has a theory, and I didn't get a chance to re watch it. Joseph to confirm that maybe Rex was playing a little bit like, eh, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I, I initially took it from him as just like you're saying, Molly, like that. That's weird. I'd have never heard of that. But then I'm thinking Anakin's got to brag to everybody like yeah. on the battlefield, <laughs> like, hey, 20, 20,000 M count, midichlorians. That's what I got. Like, it just seems like he'd be the one to frame that reading on a wall next to that pod racing poster. So it's like it's like Han yeah. being like just did the Kessel parsec. run in less than 12 parsecs. Yeah. And everyone's like, all right, whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's uh, fascinating. Yeah. I love that moment. He says he's heard it before, but the the he the, to me he just had a little bit. It's the reason I wanted to overemphasize my opinion by saying M count because uh, yeah. he, he had a little bit of not. It wasn't like M count. Him hmm, never heard. It was like M count. He's like oh, like yeah. like he knows, but he just yeah. doesn't want to say it all. Yeah, uh, Scotty J. Rue in the chat here is saying what, uh, what a lot of us have been saying. Love you all. We need to hear midi chlorians and like yeah, say the and, word. And this is yeah, 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 cowards. Yeah. And I almost felt like he was going M count. You mean yeah. midi-chlorians? With, with all due respect to Scotty and his wonderful uh, essay slash uh, college lesson on midi-chlorians, which is wonderful, you all should check it out. I have been on Just Say It Cowards since the beginning, right? Even since Andor, uh, but, or excuse me, uh, Mandalorian. But I, I I really had a good laugh over this episode. Episode that The characters in Star Wars don't watch Star Wars. So to have a lot of people being like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I just, I love that angle. It, it will play out and eventually, Scotty, they will say it. Well, I, I think it was you two on your podcast or you three on your podcast saying that uh, it makes sense to say M count if you're trying to be secretive on Mount Tantus. Yeah. If Project Necromancer is not, you know, it's hidden behind all those laser gates and stuff. So they're just like, hey, did you get those M count numbers for me instead of yelling the word metachlorians over and over mm -hmm. until someone Googles it and learns more? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, I kind of like that idea of like, yeah, let's be a little cautious in case our communications are broken and we don't have a bunch of space emails that say, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> here's yeah, how many yeah. midi chlorian counts the, the emperor has. Uh, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, Rex, Rex says, I've heard it before. So for me, my reading was like, he's almost saying, M count, that's some Jedi bleep. <laughs> Why are they bugging you, a clone, mm. about some Jedi bleep? Uh, mm -hmm. is, yeah, yeah. But, Felt like to me how did you guys alex how did you feel about it i guess i did not get that read that he knew for sure what they were i, I wouldn't be like he said he'd heard the jedi talk about it uh mm. but i i guess i didn't think that he knew especially at the end telling hunter you need to figure out why the empire wants her and then uh, maybe off screen he gives him some clues <laughs> well that yeah. that could also yeah. come from him being like oh no like this is mm -hmm. not good yeah. if that's what they want her for because i did have that thought of him being like he says like i don't want to say for sure 
but I have an idea, you know, like maybe mm. just the gravity of the situation got a little bit heavier for him at that moment. And yeah, by the end, he's like, we got to figure this out <laughs> because this might be a much bigger b deal than we think. Mm hmm. Yeah, I, I didn't feel like he's like, oh, yes, midi-chlorians. Uh, I know how those work. I can email a mm -hmm. sample to you if you want from your blood. <laughs> like, I didn't feel like he let me get out my Schick razor. I didn't feel like he was, like, in command of it. I just felt like he's like, I think I, I've heard that term before, and mm -hmm. it's from the Jedi. I don't know what it is. Okay, yeah, it, yeah. But I'm, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Yeah. If it's, if yeah, it's Jedi Jedi's. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really, I really <laughs> think that that's a good look at it, Joseph, of just kind of like, yeah, I've been around those halls enough to know. <laughs> Something, something big. I don't Jedi, understand. Jedi it. bleep is a good way to put it. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jedi bleep. Yeah, the idea of yeah. Anakin bragging about it makes sense. Like, yeah, he had oh, like yeah, his his uh, baseball jersey, and they wanted him to pick a number, and he was like, "Can 20, I put twenty thousand on it? Because that's my number." Pretty cool, Somebody else huh? was saying, I think uh, Amaranth about Obi Wan bringing it up. I love the idea of like there'd be a battle in the Clone Wars, and Anakin can get just like a little cut, and there's a little bit of blood, and. Everyone's like, oh, no, how many midi-chlorians did you lose? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like 19,000. Yeah, that, that's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> Do you have uh, any, or I guess, what is your current theory on the Omega business and how she relates to Project Necromancer? Hmm. I, I'll start by saying uh, I'm excited to see where it goes, and we at Force Center uh, always speculate responsibly, as our T-shirt says, and thank you to all those who quote that and, and link it back <laughs> to us, but including you two here. But uh, I am slightly disappointed. It uh, it might tie directly to it, <laughs> if that makes sense. I love it. I love it. I love Rise of Skywalker unapologetically. I really do. Um, just yelled at a friend over lunch about it the other day. Um, uh, it is just spectacular, wonderful Star Wars. But uh, I, I, I think it's because Joseph's, Joseph's theory, his two theories that are so damn good that I was like, I can't move off it. <laughs> and, and and that it was more about the the you know what's the secrets uh, that the uh, those on Camino unlocked and inhibitor chips and wouldn't it be great for Palpatine to be able to press a button and everyone's in line with him? We saw Chuchi and 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 Singh talk about how that's Palpatine's greatest fear. Um, but yeah, uh, I I don't think to 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 wrap my thoughts up on it. I do not think I don't think Omega's force sensitive. I don't think that. I just think she has. Uh, the blood work, she has the infrastructure, however you want to look at it, to withhold, uh, you know, all of uh, uh, the midichlorians are trying to get in there and and no loss of any generation of power or influence or anything and 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 that, that they could then take maybe her blood or something like that or, or the process and, and move it into uh, palpy clones. Yeah, I'm still not sure, you know, where they're going with it because there have been so many breadcrumbs uh, over the years. Alex, I watched your your video kind of summarizing, which is, is always so great, mm -hmm. <laughs> so helpful. If uh, it's right, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, but I think it's just like it's, you know, is she does she have a hidden enhancement like the rest of the Bad Batch? Is she mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, force sensitive? You know, I sometimes wonder, is she just sort of a Rosetta Stone clone that mm -hmm. uh, they put everything into so sort of like she has the base code for anything that Cami no one's could ever do with Django's original mm -hmm. DNA kind of thing. Is it something as, as simple as that? Um, I feel like Emery is being really underplayed. Yeah. Um, including that was like my only really mild criticism of, of one of the recent episodes when she's like, Hey, and there was a, I had a sister, she was a clone and they're all like, cool nothing nothing to say about that like i understand they couldn't have a conversation about it but i almost wanted to just see them be like should we uh, we don't have time for this um so i think how emery plays into it uh, is interesting I, I, I could absolutely see her being force sensitive i don't think she's running around with a lightsaber by the end of it or or anything like that um mm -hmm. i think for me the most important thing is i think it will be an interesting answer but i think she is being hunted for being a tool for mm -hmm. someone else. And I think the story of the clones is, nah, uh, we're people and we have our agency. And uh, this woman is not going to be a plot point in your story, Palpatine. So whatever in her enhancement is, I think, is going to lead to either she doesn't care. Her blood's special, but it doesn't matter to her or it's going to lead her to having even more agency. I, I think th that for me is just like, whatever her enhancement is, 
I hope is an aid of the story that she is her own person and she decides and it doesn't matter, you know, what her special blood is. She decides. I, I think they've done such a good job of setting up whatever the answer is that I assume the clones are going to attack Mount Tantis. And if Project Necromancer is actually related to everything going on with the Rise of Skywalker, that because the clones are like, we're going to either save Omega or save all our brothers or both, whatever it is, we're going to save what's important to us. And by doing that, they're going to destroy all of Palpatine's plans and ultimately mm -hmm. save the galaxy. I'm like, that's so good. And mm -hmm. they're never going to know that it's that big, but mm -hmm. they've, they've set this up to have such a great ending. Yeah. Yeah. The ending really felt like that of, of, you know, Rex saying, you know, you got to find out which, which she is. And I, I don't, why they want her, you know, and I don't feel like Hunter's going to be like, oh, I'm going to figure out M count and oh, it's Palpatine. And he's trying to like, I think it's just going to be like, it's not enough to just rescue our brothers. We need to burn Tantus to the ground mm -hmm. uh, because of whatever's going on in the creepy basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of you maybe said, Alex, maybe think of just, you know, we love these acts of compassion in Star Wars. And yes, there's a desire to go absolutely destroy Tantus and, and, and stop what's there, but it's out of this, you know, it keeps going back to Omega saying, I, I, I left people behind and how horrible that is and how Rex is telling Hunter, this is this is the fight, man. And you, you ain't leaving it yet, man. And that's to me, empathy and compassion and connection and those kind of things spiral out. We celebrate often here Han Solo's, uh, you know, compassionate cheek touch, the uh, act of compassion that saved the galaxy as well, because that that eventually leads to some of the stuff going on in, in Rise of Skywalker. So th so that's a very Star Wars thing. The, the 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 what's and the how's are all interesting and fun to debate to be debated. But we always go back to the why. It just it comes from compassion. That's what you want to teach here. We're not leaving them behind. We're not just going to go smash it. We're going to go save. And that mm -hmm. can then spiral out because we know the project's going to stall just like we knew the Death Star. Like it took them 19 years to build it. There's there's a lot to, you know, a lot of lot of plot and story left in Project Necromancer. Uh, but for right here, right now, and, and like I said, to set back the research, to to destroy it, whatever it may be, I do think we'll have galaxy-wide effects. Yeah. I see people in the comments talking about her adaptive learning, which I also think is an, that's an interesting uh, what and why to me of like, we mm -hmm. she's yeah. we've seen her imitate Crosshair, Hunter, I believe Fee, and mm -hmm, it, all mm -hmm. of it's got this great childlike quality of just trying on different ways to be an adult, uh, I think is what makes it so charming. And and if that yeah. sort of that curiosity and that I get to decide who I want to be. And if she is some mm -hmm. super clone who has record strength and it secretly <laughs> and crosshairs, you know, and it can yeah. pick up anything. If she spends time with people, that's kind of like a cool over the top fantasy thing. But it, it then also just becomes this metaphor for for children in the world of they can absorb whatever their you know mm -hmm. group of super dads and aunts and uncles <laughs> teach them and, and become you know this super uh, amalgamation of all their heroes yeah who else has the doesn't have the the like sp sped up aging as far as the clones go i think it's just boba fett and omega as far as we know because mm -hmm. I wonder if the, something about the speeding up the aging process in all the mm -hmm. other clones is what mm. Palp yeah. is what is putting a wrench in all of Palpatine's other cloning plans. Mm. Like, yeah, I just can't get this right. But then Omega <laughs> yeah. comes along and they're like, oh, there it is. Like something about the aging process uh, is is the key. And that's why Because mm -hmm. like I'm trying to like think really simply of what it could be, <laughs> like really simplify it. I don't know. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I but like if that's that the case, then Boba Fett could also be a potential. Right? But and then if they haven't. Uh, earlier in, uh, in the stream, someone asked, will we get Boba Fett in the show? Which we've seen that question pop up before, but that just made me think of it. I, mm. Yeah. I think we definitely, we, not speaking for Joseph, but we, yeah, we really think there's a place for Boba Fett in the show. There's mm. this uh, dangling kind of you know, a thought around the idea of who Omega is, obviously, and, and, and what that might mean for, for Boba Fett. It would make sense, but, you know, it could also not happen. Mm -hmm. I would love, I really want Boba Fett to to show up. I think the, the show has been doing, you know, uh, great uh, emotional work on the clones, but it has been also kind of wrapping up a few unresolved threads from the animated shows, including the Zillow Beast, and, you know, that, that arc of just getting 
Boba in the armor would be nice mm -hmm. to see. Mm -hmm. And and I wouldn't want it if it felt like it had no place in Bad Batch. But since Omega is so um, uh, loving and wanting to give people a chance, mm -hmm. and this whole show has been about leave no brother left behind, no matter how big of an a-hole they are, reach out to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. That would be a pretty great moment for for Boba to put the armor on when he's offered a sister and he says no. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. would be a great just point on his journey to where he where he ends up learning his lesson with the Tuscans that connections worthwhile it it yeah. would be fun to see him yeah. just be and a little a-hole and say no to it because <laughs> he's, yeah, he, he's really in that uh he's a little bleeper face right mm -hmm. now he has connections to ventress too so mm -hmm. if we know ventress is popping up it's like you can connect ventress to quinlan and boba fett oh. and, and cad also, bane right was in the trailer as well and oh yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah uh I, I do like that idea that you know the the bad batch being this different kind of clone unit that they mm -hmm. might have at some point worked with an unorthodox Jedi could be Quinlan Voss mm -hmm. who has connections to Asajj. So I'm like, I'm really hoping they bring oh, yeah. Quinlan along with Asajj. Oh yeah. Cause echo made that comment that we were kind of picking apart earlier of like, I've made a lot of connections mm -hmm. or around the galaxy yeah. when, when, he's giving, the crossbow. when he's giving the crossbow to Omega and we're like, mm -hmm. who do you know? Echo. <laughs> You know anyone who knows about M counts? Yeah, <laughs> it's also mm. possible. That, so, uh, so if they're, I mean, uh, basically, out, yeah. what I what I'm getting at, Andy, is that maybe they're searching for like, okay, we need to find a Jedi mm. to answer this Jedi bleep. Mm. Well, let's <laughs> and and Quinlan's out there somewhere, so <laughs> let's go find him. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of us have been thinking that Asajj is in, in that clip in the trailer is in her bounty hunter mode again mm -hmm. and answering a call you know but maybe she's guarding quinlan i i think yeah. it would be odd if she <laughs> went through everything she did in dark disciple died came back somehow and then we're just like i guess i'll be a bounty hunter again so i i'm hopeful that maybe she is with quinlan and they're both working on like the beginning of the hidden path since that's uh, trying to connect all these dots to like Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi and Star Wars Jedi. But I, I think there's a way they could make all that work. Yeah, I would love that. I would absolutely love that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also kind of wonder from that scene at the beginning of this, uh, these this two parter uh, with uh, the chooch and the stash, as somebody described <laughs> saying early on in the comments. Very funny. <laughs> the chooch and the stash. That's a total cliffhanger of what Chuchi actually wants to talk to him about, mm -hmm. which you know mm -hmm. got us speculating on. Yeah, is the show going to deal a little bit with some early steps uh, toward rebellion that that might get squashed because we mm -hmm. don't know where the chooch ends up. <laughs> Keep her safe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were talking about the uh, what's his name, Singh. Yeah. He, oh yeah, yeah. All the thing, yeah. He is, he is not in any kind of disguise. He's just walking around with his little monocle and his big old hat and That's his true. whole outfit. They didn't want to model a, a disguise for him. And I was just like, <laughs> he sticks out like a it's sore like, thumb. I know it's very expensive to make a whole new model for one character for one scene, but it's like all this cloak and dagger stuff. And he's just like, I hadn't even thought about that. Hope nobody outfit. sees me. <laughs> Rex yeah. like shows up in his like whole toga thing, like a Halloween party where no one else dressed up and like, come on, man, <laughs> at least take your hat off. Come especially, on, man. Especially since they have that kind of uh, information puck where it's like, you mean this, the guy in this picture? He's yeah, wearing this exact He's outfit. There. The guy who hasn't changed his bleeping clothes. Yeah. <laughs> in thin exchange, giant red hat. <laughs> from yep. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. I, I was so invested in like, oh, it's Sing. Oh, he's cool. He's back. Awesome. And like, yeah. I hadn't even thought of it. So funny. <laughs> it's, the, it's Raiders of the Lost Ark. Oh, there he is. Yeah. And he's right there. He's getting on the sub. Yeah. I um, want to say hi to Ken, our good friend, Ken Plume. Hey, shouting hey, shouting out, use all my Star Wars buddy batch. Look, man, that's that's neat, Ken Plume, but you've got 22 Phantom Menace cups you got to unpack today. Get to work, man. <laughs> <laughs> you mean one of these? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's one. Now add twenty to what so you're both holding up. Big. Is there a seal bibble one? Huge. Uh, is there? Oh, I don't know. There's a Ma Captain Molly, Tarples. You, know, you were the one that. I don't the think Tarples there's a cup. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, 
that's some good glup shit cups right there. I, lo- I, <laughs> love, I love that in 99, the confidence to be like, this is going to be a breakout scene stealer. And I love tarples. <laughs> I love tarples. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has so much faith in Jar Jar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm still... Mm-hmm. We we talked about this two weeks ago when we got the cups out. Uh, but Molly at Celebration Anaheim bought these uh, on the floor after a drink or two, <laughs> and she was like, "Look what I got!" And she she chose Queen Amidala. <laughs> look look at his Gundry. hand. Look at his <laughs> you hand. Just wanted the point. He's the only one that's actively pointing, and I had to have it. <laughs> I was well, like, look. he looks like he's gonna. You could really have tell someone off yeah. Darth and Wall or something for me or Tarples. <laughs> no, nah, she, she knows your your opinion on trickle down economics, and she <laughs> felt Newt, Newt Gunray was uh, the right one to have. Yeah. Newt Gunray totally looks like uh, when somebody can't remember your name, so just like there he is, there's that guy. There he is. <laughs> it's My you. Man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'll uh, pull up this message from our friend Sean Room. Thanks, Sean. Did anyone else picture Hilo in the armor when they introduced Lieutenant Hilo? No, just me. <laughs> R.I.P. I did think about Power that. Uh, we were very happy that, uh, about that. Uh, our dog now has a clone commando named after him. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's okay that they spelled it different because that's what Star Wars does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, I just... His name. I, I just assumed that was a previously identified clone because I'm bad at remembering that and that that's why you named the dog that. So I learned something new right now. <laughs> uh, no, our dog is named after a Battlestar Galactica character. Oh, yeah, familiar. Familiar. <laughs> oh, okay. But I thought, you know, clone. Made sense. <laughs> uh, calm like a bomb. Thanks for the super chat and question. How do we think Wolf is going to go from the Empire to where we see him in Rebels? And how would it align with what he did in Rebels? I do think that's a good question because he mm. he's definitely oh, yeah. gone through a lot of stuff in mm-hmm. Rebels. Mm-hmm. He seems like he has the most PTSD out of all of them, but he still does mm-hmm. contact the Empire when yeah he's he's Ren- the last of them he's the last of them to to, to kind of join mm. that yeah. side, and so he still has that tendency to go to the Empire, I feel like. I, I don't know how, how it's going to play out on screen, but it, it, it tracks for a lot of things in, in real life. Uh, I, I've been through a, a lot of changes on my outlook of the world, and sometimes you feel like that's you're, you're, you're being a traitor to yourself or how you were raised or how what your job was or what your perspective was before. Do you feel the urge to change? And it gets you get scared and you, you, you fall back on things. Uh, and you know, there's some real tension there. I, I, I was, I was saying on Force Center, it's been about a couple of years since I've watched the return of those three characters, and I really, actually, do want to do that probably tonight over a, a microwave burrito. But uh, I, I think it, it, it just kind of, to me, he's that guy. He's that one. He's like, I almost, I'm almost at the finish line, but ugh, there's just some habits and fear holding me back. Yeah, I could see him going through some some hell here before uh, the end of Bad Batch, based on that that choice. Um, but I also feel like it's, it's been about a year since I've watched that Rebels episode, but I also feel like it's almost, uh, uh that call is almost like, I just don't want to get involved again. And yeah. I, I don't yeah. want, them, I don't want the empire disrupting. Mm. Our stuff. I like fishing oh. <laughs> along those lines. <laughs> it, it could be if he goes to Tantus and something horrible happens to him, then when sure. he's on Celos and the Jedi show up. He might be more afraid of what the Empire would do if they found out. He might be yeah. like, uh, I'd rather tell them <laughs> than get found out and punished for it again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I, I could I could see that. Totally. Yeah. I like this totally. from from our buddy Maddie. Is Wolf and his squad going to be the cavalry that arrives in the, mm-hmm. the big finale? I think maybe him and many others, hopefully we get a big... Reunion. Yep. I, I Sid, think Wolf... Sid pops up saying, on your left. <laughs> <laughs> she gets the Han Solo moment like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about goggles. <laughs> <laughs> if we could get her voice back in, in Bad Badge just for one more episode, mm. I, I'd be right. forever grateful. You need you need Carla there. For, for Wolf... I think he's probably going to be at Tantus. I think he's going to need mm. saving. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. I think, I think I like straight that. to Tantus right away for mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> He needs his brain scrubbed. 
Go ahead. He, yeah, and he might even he's going to have to answer for what he did uh, to the empire, and you know that always goes well for anyone who apologizes to the superiors in the empire. So yeah, I think that I, I could see some fallout from that. Uh, but this brings up a an interesting point: we haven't seen or heard from Sid yet. Do you think she'll be in the latter half of the season? Yeah, I think so. I think there's a place for her. I think they're going to slip back into a little underworld uh, stuff going on. We 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 know we know we know Fennec and and, and Cad show up. So, and and dare say dare I say you know uh, you know I don't think Ventress and Quinlan are exactly holding hands in public walking down Coruscant Street. So, uh, we're going to go a little deeper. So yeah, I, I I think there's a place for her, and she's got things to answer for. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I hope so. I I I, I like that the honesty that you know even though she cared about the bad batch and felt legitimately bad that's some great animation acting when she kind of just slumps into like what did i do so i Mm -hmm. think she feels like absolutely awful and guilty for it but i don't feel like she is a character who has changed that she's got her worldview and she's had it for a long time of you care about people but you got to look out for number one and i think having some resolution of that perspective with omega because I think Omega's, mm-hmm. you know, so hopeful, but she's growing up and she's not naive anymore. And I think she's got to be like, yeah. you always give people a chance, but some people out there are like Sid of like, you can't change people if they don't want to try. Mm-hmm. I, I think maybe up until today, I've been pro Sid redemption, but thinking about like the lines that Crosshair and Hauser exchanged, where Crosshair said, I was loyal to the Empire, but it didn't go both ways. Back in the the racing episode uh, of season two, Malegi says the same thing about Sid. He's like, you can be loyal to her, but it's not going to go both ways. And so just that parallel and the show having an overarching theme of like, who or what do you give your loyalty to? Mm -hmm. uh, Be careful Mm -hmm. about that is good. And I'm like, I'll be mad at Sid forever, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it would be weird, I think, if she never came back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, and they yeah. did play that up. Like I believe, like Tech had, like he was keeping his list of things that we have done for you, Sid. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so as to ensure some, uh, he's got receipts. Emotion. Yeah, he had receipts. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and we got to see Bolo and Catch again playing some games or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And here's a fun one uh, for side characters. Could we mm. see Cut and Family again? I, I, I think we could, and mm. I, I, I love Stu Quain and Cut and everything. Yeah, yeah, no, I think we could. I just, I, I don't know if we, I don't know. I think, I think maybe that was a, a wrap on them from uh, the show back and forth. If we, if we get some kind of like happy ending epilogue where we see clones living peacefully yeah. in all these different locations, yeah. we could go revisit them and see who decided to oh. go join Cut and Cut's family to retire. That's yeah. a good point. You know, Cut has done a good job of finding places to settle down already. So maybe yeah. w- once Pabu is done for, everyone on Pabu is just going to go hang out with <laughs> Cut. They've got like the perfect <laughs> setup. But I do uh, like yeah. that, Molly. Just the show will, it'll absolutely have a perfectly happy ending and we'll get a, a montage <laughs> yeah. of every, every living clone and where they are. <laughs> I believe in this. I'm, I'm hoping for hope at the end of all this. <laughs> And just random clones just eating dinner and suddenly look over the camera like, why am I in this? What am I doing? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the, the yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, Sue LeQuain is, is clone X, of course. Uh, <laughs> no, that, but they, that, that is so the, Molly, you're so right. That's totally the way they were positioned is they were, they gave parenting advice to Hunter that he needed to hear. And they were sort of the eyes through which we saw the, the crackdown of everybody needing the codes. Mm-hmm. Um, mm mm-hmm and wanting to live in some amount of, of freedom without being a number. Um, the idea that there could be a Jedi path. And then for clones, you go see cut. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cut gets you set up with, you know, a place to kick back. I, I, I hope they find somewhere to live. <laughs> somewhere safe. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't Pabu. It's not Pabu. <laughs> Can't have anything nice. Uh, <laughs> Clone Force, thank you for the super chat. Uh, I think Asajj will team up with the Bad Batch because she knows how it feels to lose siblings since hers, uh, sh- since she lost hers to the Sith. The clone assassin is Tekker Cody, Vader versus Asajj. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
I I do think Asajj, even though the trailer made it seem like she was hunting them or something. Uh, yeah, I think she'll fully be on her, their side. But she I love so I, I love much that in common line. with them. That line where she's like, I wasn't planning on killing you, but you're making it difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, just screams to me like uh, I'm trying to be better. I know I mm -hmm. was bad and I'm trying mm -hmm. to be good, but you're making it hard and I still kind of want to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I look forward to seeing her struggle. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and I'm intrigued too. I saw, it was a quote from uh, Nika Futterman saying, kind of saying there's, there's more to come in a way. Yeah. I saw that new story this week. That's, mm. that's interesting to me. I do hope, like, I don't know if that's going to be lead to anything big, but I do hope she gets a uh, tales of the Jedi episode or something. Mm. Just like really diving into her whole story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, could that be, would be, could be great. Good yeah, I love that. Mm -hmm. I like that idea. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about the Vader of it all. I'm sure that is a, a one that people have very, very mm -hmm. strong opinions on. Um, but I, I, uh, what I like right mm -hmm. now is it feels like the clones aren't high on Palpatine's list of concerns. Like, right. got oh yeah, most of them locked down on Tantus. He wants Omega back, but in all of his I mean, they had that meeting about them and, and you know, on on Tarkin's planet uh, mm -hmm. about and it didn't seem like there was a general agreement that there was that they were that big of a threat. Like, you know, there's a little back and forth there. So I don't know. There's a part of me that just feels like um, I, I know he uh, uh, the question was about Asajj versus Vader popping up. But I just, there's a there's a part of me that feels like it would be nice to just leave Vader out of this because clones aren't going to rise to be a big enough concern to him until they blow up Tantus. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The clone, yeah. It, to me, it's like, it's Palpatine switching out his cassette collection for a CD collection in 1987. He's like, just, just get new ones. We got, we got TKs. We're good. Yeah. I don't think I want Vader in this at this point. Like rebels. It was kind of interesting that he came in in season two and then that was it. Yeah, like, it also makes sense in the timeline more. Right, he's he's, he's still Vader on the uh, on the self discovery as Vader trip right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't really need him to just like show up and wreck everything at the end, just kind of like a Rogue One scene. Mm -hmm. Like I, I don't need to do that again. It, it would be yeah. like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order too. Like mm -hmm. eh, we can just let it be about the clones. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean they've talked about Vader before and how they want to use him very minimally very specifically i don't think he's really needed in this particular story i mean we got palpatine it makes sense to show him coming and yeah. coming in and checking on that progress vader is just off mm -hmm. doing other stuff uh people in the chat uh, saying that you know the vader and the stormtrooper models uh, exist uh in terms of the animation which sure. makes me think uh sing should have disguised himself as darth vader <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just like the big helmet, but on top of the big red hat. So. <laughs> Vader looks awfully short now. Has anyone else noticed that? <laughs> I do, you before. know, I, I I do talk about that a lot. Of like, they made an animation model. They they put all that money into it, and they're they've got to use it again, right? So <laughs> there is that. They made mm -hmm. the Vader model for one scene, but it was an important one. Mm -hmm. Great one. Great yeah. one. It's Vader. Yeah, it's Everything dope. is the same, but he has a little hollow projected monocle <laughs> outside of his helmet. <laughs> and <laughs> a like, mustache under his nose. Still... <laughs> mm, something's off about Vader. <laughs> Vader's going through his steampunk phase again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll start to wrap up here, but uh, as far as other returning, not characters, but things, what do you think about the Zillow Beast making another return? Or are we going to be in for another... 20 years of what happened to the Zillow Beast questions. Uh, I think I think the Zillow Beast comes back in a big way. Uh, somebody was joking in the comments about Wrecker riding him. I think it was Maddie. Uh, <laughs> well, of course, it's the most heavy metal thing to say. Uh, we, got, we got Boba Fett on Rancor. We need Wrecker on a Zillow Beast uh, for sure. For sure. Uh, there was that line from Hemlock that was like, you know, bragging to Palpatine about how everything's going great at Mount Tantus and basically like we've built a larger facility for our weirder experiments. Mm -hmm. That felt to me like that's Zillow Beast and uh, the, the Slither Vine type technology. Like 
they're experimenting with lots of horrific crap that I think, um, you know, I think there's a potential bad batch going full cabin in the woods and, you know, <laughs> releasing everything. That is the we, end. we already I got like, a mini version of that with the mega releasing all those animals. Yeah. It's like, yeah. Yep, the second you show me a button that locks everything, uh, yeah. you know, that there's button a button also unlocks, unlocks everything. <laughs> I like the idea of there's one big giant room that's kind of a t even more twisted version of Wonka's factory. So it's like hemlock. Mm -hmm. Just there's what we got. Just plant leech. Be sucked up into this tube. The Zilla beast is over there. You know, come and see. It's a musical number. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let Tantus belong to the Zilla beast. <laughs> I agree. I want that Led Zeppelin song. That would be very poetic, though. After seeing. I, for, I forget the name of the planet, but the the abandoned imperial planet that had the the slither vines all over the place, mm -hmm. and yeah, yeah. that just kind of got out of hand for them, and they just abandoned it and left it there. So, if their experiments get too out of hand, mm -hmm. then yeah. it'd be nice to see them have to deal with all of them at once. <laughs> That's, I mean, not only in the Bad Batch, but I'm like, there's potential for it to show up in the the new republic movie too mm. since tantus was originally part of the the thrawn trilogy so they're gonna show up and they're just gonna be a zillow uh, beast chilling and they'll be like never yeah. mind we're not going there <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. we don't need it that bad yeah uh, you're yeah really crazy. Mm. what if they've turned the mountain itself into a clone in the <laughs> big eyes <laughs> oh it'd be like that comic where mm. the mountain mm -hmm. talks and Oh, the, yeah. The Ewok comic, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. You're going the deep. mountain itself is actually a, a really good mountain, and it's like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> uh, Francisco Geo sent in a super chat. Thanks so much. I like how Crosshair gives a good fight to the shadow operatives. This gives an opportunity for the Batch, Rex, and Hauser to have an upper hand to eliminate any threat the Empire throws at them. I, I think Wrecker could easily take a shadow operative. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> I think Wrecker alone could probably take two or three. I mean, they're mm -hmm. quick, though. Yeah. Like, Wrecker might be a little more slow, but he's definitely strong enough to take one. If Batcher can take down... Who was it that you said, he Batcher? Uh, clone Commando. Yeah. And one jump. Batcher... Just, oh. Yeah, one jump. Yeah, yeah, one jump. <laughs> I, you know, my I, Wrecker's my guy in a lot of ways, mostly because I'm sure he enjoys a gas station sandwich, too, but I... I do worry it's a little, it could be a little bit like the Man in Black versus uh, Andre the Giant and Princess Bride, where mm. you know, the size can be used to his disadvantage. Yeah. Yeah, but he's like one of those, like, but if he gets a hold of you, you're done. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's slow, but if he gets you, you it's over. Mm -hmm. It is over. Yeah. Go for the knees, uh, but hope for the best. Yeah. Man. <laughs> I love I, I love how I thought all the action was really great and, and it, there's been it's been a, the show's been a little slower on action so it was great to have two episodes with a little bit more action but all yeah, of Crosshair yeah. stuff was so cool uh, to see him be like I am not as good as I used to be but I'm going to mm -hmm. try to find different ways to keep yeah. fighting like I don't know that resonated with me as a middle aged man for some reason <laughs> I'm like <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> just going to say uh, I do have to try to work out tonight yeah absolutely <laughs> <laughs> Uh, triple zero tragic solitude sent in a question too. Thank you. Is it nostalgic to be back on Teth again? The bad stuff happened because the place is cursed by zero the hut spirit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would I, be amazing. I love, I love the Teth again. The yeah, ghost of zero the hut, if, if that yeah. were there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, well, they would, they, somebody should have been walking through. It's like, it still smells. Uh, <laughs> still stinky. Um, What's with all the gaudy decorations in here? <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved it. I went on about yeah. it on, on uh, uh, Force Center a bit, but mm -hmm. it, it, it just it makes obvious plot sense from this is a place Rex and the rest of the clones know. But just kind of the, the history of it, of uh, Bad Batch being... Got a, kind of a, a somber show of everything's happening in this haunted galaxy. It's mm -hmm. it used to be a monastery long ago, and it's this place that's like they're living in working in the shattered, haunted shadow of the war they fought. And it's yeah. such a contrast, like mood wise, to when we saw it in the Clone Wars animated film. And it's like literally the first time I think the Kiners used a rock beat. And it's mm. jokes about a, a Ahsoka and Anakin racing to the top, and it's 
early in the war when the clones thought they really understood their purpose and working with their Jedi. And like Rex must look around that and just go like, oh, that, that was a long time ago. That was a long time. Like, so yeah. much memory there. I, I, yeah, I love the use of it. I, I think I always weigh, you know, nostalgia versus purpose in the story. And yeah, take, going back to, to the start of it all, a lot of ways worked for me. And they're just cool. I, I'd love to know a little bit more about the Boomer monks and have them pop up in other places. So I mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. well, I think it was great, like beyond nostalgia of just kind of bringing everything full circle, I guess, from more of the fan perspective. But we mm -hmm. first saw that place in the Clone Wars movie. Totally. And this is kind of the story that wraps up the the clone story. So to mm -hmm. revisit that, and yeah, it's on fire and it's falling apart. <laughs> yeah, I, I liked it. We yeah, didn't it talk too much about the music, but we actually just rewatched The Terminator last <laughs> night. And so every time I heard the music that would play for the, the operative, it sounded kind of Terminator-esque <laughs> to me. And I was like, this is hitting so hard for me. I love it. Yeah, the music's great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, kind, love it. Kind As of always, yeah. yeah kind music of is always great. The animation is always great. Show's great. Mm. <laughs> show's great. It's the best it's ever been. <laughs> show good. Show, show good. good. I like show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we can wrap up uh, before we do. Where can people uh, check out Force Center and follow you online? Sure. Hey, we're online, uh, Force Center Pod. Even though we've expanded fully into the YouTube world, we were always kind of there, and that's where we've uh, spent a lot of time over the course of our careers. But you can go subscribe to our uh, YouTube page. We have great stuff. Jennifer sends her regards and apologies. She was going to be here today, but life got in the way of uh, of recording today for both our show and this appearance here. But please check out her uh, Jedi Beats. It's reworked, updated versions of her original podcast from 2016-2017 range. We got four up now. The latest one is the Inside the Mind of Katie Lucas and the Evolution of Asajj Ventress. Check them out. They're uh, mini documentaries. And the next one up is going to be uh, a week from this coming Monday. We're putting a little more time into it. Jennifer's putting a lot into it in his look back at the life of Carrie Fisher. That's all on our YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, uh, we've always got a very kind uh, response from Star Wars Explained audience whenever we uh, we do these things. Um, and uh, if anybody has enjoyed our, our blathering, uh, on YouTube, we are full faces now, as we like to say. Uh, we used to sometimes just put up audio or every once in a while a special thing. We do all of our all of our episodes with full faces. Maybe that's a selling point, maybe a detraction. I don't know, but it's true. <laughs> uh, well, there's links to uh, your YouTube channel, Linktree, to Patreon, where you've got a lot of great stuff that's also outside of Star Wars, uh, 007 Center, Indiana Jones mm -hmm. Center, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So uh, everyone you. go check all that out. Yeah, and, and I have to do I would I have to do a quick personal, but I, I'm gonna be doing a stand up in Boston April sixth. So you you know, anyone out there in the Star Wars Explain World who's in the Boston area, Mark Ellis and I will be there. Information on my website. Sorry, I get in trouble if I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, if you want to follow me on any of the social media, uh, my handle is my name everywhere at Joseph Scrimshaw. I'm on Blue Sky, Threads, Mastodon, Instagram, all sorts of places you can find me there. I also have a blog called Finish Your Monsters. Every Tuesday, it is a discussion of uh, creative ideas and how to keep yourself motivated and moving forward. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Well, great. Thank you both for joining us for this episode of The Clone Zone. Uh, everyone watching, go check them out because they're awesome. And uh, we will be back tomorrow to stream our Lego build. We're almost done with the Venator, uh, but that's mm -hmm. it for us. So thanks everyone for watching and may the force be with you. Goodbye. Bye.